Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be covering using factory bot rails, which is going to give you an alternative to fixtures, which is a lot easier to use and seems like a lot more usable uh, as a whole. In order to set this up, we're going to be using devise as well as active storage so that you can get a look at sort of how to use all of these things together. Uh, the actual setup's pretty easy though. I'm also going to be using RSpec for this. So for this, we're going to do a Rails new video, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just run this command. There's stuff you can do uh, where you can skip like your other test suites to only use RSpec uh, and you know run from, from scratch. So this is going to have a bit more bloat, uh, but I figure it's probably closer to what you're going to see when you go to set this up. Uh, and there's always tutorials on how to specifically set up our spec. So I'm not going to worry about that too much here. So to get started, we're going to come into our gem file and in our gem file, we're going to have to add quite a few gems. Uh, these are going to be uh, these four right here. So our spec rails, it's our spec dash rails, which is going to be for testing factory underscore bot underscore rails is going to be the factory bot that we're setting up for our factory pattern devices for our user accounts. Faker is for some fake test data. And additionally, for active storage, if you're so inclined, it does come with the image processing gem already set in the gem file. You just have to uncomment it. So we'll go ahead and we'll run a bundle install command for these five gems. After we do that, we're gonna go ahead and set up our application. So we're gonna say rails active underscore storage colon install. That'll add active storage for us. Now we'll do a uh, rails g device colon install to add our device. We can then do a Rails G devise user to create our user accounts. We can then go ahead and do our, uh, I guess I should have done this first, but we'll do a Rails G rspec colon install command real quick. So we'll create our rspec, create our spec helpers and our Rails helper. Uh, at this point, you might need to create your factories. In this case, it's already created the factories for me. Uh, but if you don't have them, you can always just create these uh, folders and then create the files for yourself. So now that we have these user accounts, let's go ahead and let's create our scaffold. We'll do a Rails G scaffold, and we'll say this is for some posts. Each post has a title, a, uh, we'll say content of type text, and a user colon belongs to, which will set up that association for us. Now you can see it creates a whole bunch of files for us here, including our factories and uh, some of our specs as well. So we'll just go ahead and we'll take a look at all of this. Let's come over to our side panel here and we'll just uh, quickly set up our active storage stuff. To do that, we'll come into our models, our post.rb, because we have to set up the back end. So we'll say has one attached image, oops, attached uh, image. We can then come into our middleware, which is gonna be our controllers and our post controller. Instead of having a user ID here, I'm just gonna change this to an image. And then up here in the create, I'm going to say at post dot user equals current underscore user, just like that. So that's our back end and our middle end. Let's go ahead and let's deal with our front end. So we'll come into our views, our posts and our uh, form in our form. Instead of having this user ID, we're going to change this to a image. And instead of a text field, this will be a file field that sets up our form. Now let's go ahead and let's change our partial instead of rendering this user ID. We're just going to do something along the lines of a image tag with a URL for the post.image if uh, post.image.attached question mark. That just makes it a little bit more clear exactly what we're doing here. We're grabbing specifically the URL for the post image only if the post has an image. So that sets up our device and our post uh, images. So let's come into our index page and real quick, let's just do a uh, if uh, current underscore user and we'll just do a link to the logout button else we'll do a link to the login button and then we'll just say end right there just so that we have something to mess with we can now come over here and do a rails s this is a bit of a spoiler here uh, but we can come over to our posts and it'll tell us we have to run our migrations we'll go ahead and we'll run those uh, oops, and we have a login path here, and this is incorrect. I don't know where this is coming from. The logout needs to be the destroy user session path, and the method over here needs to be a data that has a turbo underscore method colon colon delete. Instead of a login path, this will be the new user session path, just like that. Over here and refresh. So now we have a login button. 
but I don't want to do that yet. I'm just going to come over here to new post, say test and case and click create post and it'll tell us a user has to exist. This is important because if we try to run our tests right now, if we do a bundle uh, exec our spec, we should see a couple errors pop up uh, and by a couple, I mean quite a few. Uh, but some of these are going to tell us that there is a uh, user must exist. So in our form, the user has to exist, but also we have to check here because the user is set to nil inside of these tests. So that's a couple things we're gonna have to fix. Uh, in terms of this though, we can just come back to our posts and just log in real quick after we start our server and we'll just refresh. Uh, so we'll say back, we'll say uh, log in, click sign up, do a dean at example.com with a password of password. And now we're good. Let's come over to slash posts. We can click new post, test and case. We'll choose a file. I just downloaded this file. It's a test image. Go ahead and create the post. We can see here the image is appearing on the page. Go back to our index page, which also has this image. I like doing this as opposed to test driven development. Uh, because although I can write an empty test to make sure I can pass it later, um, I can also just go ahead and pass that test when I go to write it now, because that took me all of 10 seconds. I know I'm going to like meet my, my Java professor in the afterlife for saying that, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things where you, you can pick your poison. And in this case, I'm choosing to <laughs> assert the existence of the image here in a second. So we'll come into our spec, our factories and our post.rb. So this is what our factories look like. We have a factory for our post, and then we just add whatever attributes we need in here. But I wanna use faker for this. So we're gonna go ahead and say faker, colon, colon, lorem sentence with a word count of three. We'll do the same thing for our content, but we'll use paragraphs instead with a sentence count. And for the users, we can actually just say factory bot.create a user. Pretty simple stuff. We can then come into our users. And in here, because this is for device, we just need to say this has an email. It's going to have a password and it needs to have a password confirmation. And for these, I always like to just use password because uh, it's just a running joke on the channel at this point, and it makes it a lot easier for testing. So we can go ahead and grab this and just paste this in right here. Uh, ideally, we would store these in a variable, which we would then use here, but you get the idea. Uh, so that gives us our device users and our posts are going to use that user when they're created. So that's set up for us, that's pretty cool. But of course, if we come over here, and we run a bundle exec r spec again. We should still see that four tests are still failing. We'll see four failures. And these are just for our views. So our edit page, our index page, our new page, and our show page are erroring. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at one of these. And it, it becomes pretty obvious right away why these are failing. In our edit page here, uh, we have a couple things being done, but our user is set to nil up top here. So how do we, how do we fix this? Well, it's actually really easy to fix this. We can just say, uh, instead of doing this post.create, we wanna use factory bot.create a post. And that right away will work, but this down here will now fail uh, because we're doing this post uh, user ID. Because remember, we created this with a user relationship, uh, but we don't have that anymore. So in our edit page right here, it says, hey, there's a name of post user ID missing, but we found, or expected, but we found a zero. So instead of doing this uh, expectation for this uh, user ID, we can actually just change this to expect a input with a name for the post image because we now have a image form. Go ahead and run our bundle exec r spec again. We can see we now only have three failures. So let's come into our index page next. Inside of our index page, we have a couple uh, things being used here. But instead of doing these two creates, we'll just once again, just say, hey, factory bot create two posts for us. And then instead of doing these checks right here, because we don't have a hard coded title, we're actually using that faker uh, title that were generated for us. What we can do is we can just say, all right, I want to grab our two posts. So I'll say at posts equals whatever this returns. And then in here, I'll just change the logic around a little bit to check for the post title. So I'll just do this and tab back over. Uh, and then instead of having this line right here, oops, with our post title where we're checking for a count of two, we're now actually gonna have to check for two counts of one, which we'll do right here. So what this is doing now is it's saying assert select for cell selector, for text, regular expression, but we're grabbing the first post.title.2s and we're expecting a count of one. So let's do the same thing for the second post, which will have a index of one, uh, and we'll just expect a count of one there as well. 
We can do the same thing for the post content right here, uh, where we do the content instead of the title. And then at the bottom, we can actually check for the images. So we'll get rid of this line right here for user ID because it's checking for nil, which doesn't make any sense. And instead, we'll just add these two lines. Now, what these are doing are they're, check they're checking for a image tag that has a source, and we're using the Rails blob path for the at post dot image with a only path set to true. This Rails blob path, we do need to include a Rails application routes URL helpers for, but this will work just fine for us. But of course, we have an issue here. We need to actually like add this image. To do that, we have to come into our post factory. Inside of our post factory, we need to do a little bit more uh, magic. This is going to be a after build uh, block which says post.image.attach for our IO, because we're using active storage, we have to include these three lines. Our IO is just going to be a file that we store inside of spec assets images test uh, JPEG, excuse me. So to do that, we'll come into spec, right click new folder, call this assets. Inside of assets, right click new folder, call this images. Inside of images, right click, uh, actually not right click, we're gonna come over to unsplash, search for the word test, download the first image. Uh, I named the image test.jpg, and then I'm just going to drag this into my images folder because I'm using WSL. I can just drag and drop like that. So now we have this test.jpg, which is inside of spec slash assets slash images slash test.jpg with a file name of test.jpg and a uh, content type of image slash JPEG. Make sure it's spelled that way. Otherwise, you'll get a de uh, deprecation error. And there we go. So now that is set up. If we now come over to our terminal and run a bundle exec rspec, uh, we'll get an error here for our device, I believe. But uh, this is going to be for our warden error. So we're just going to go ahead and in our index real quick, we'll just backspace this, save it, run this again. And now we can see we have two failures. The reason why we're getting this error is because current user doesn't exist here. What we can do is say is user signed in and run a bundle exec rspec. And you'll see we're still getting this error. And the reason for this is we need to include the device test controllers uh, helper. So where you, where you can do this is inside of, I believe it's going to be your Rails helper, uh, wherever this is, let's come down here in your Rails helper right here inside of your spec, you have a Rails helper file and inside of that Rails helper file, you can include a uh, section up here in your config. So it's just gonna be config.include device colon colon test colon colon controllers helper with a type of view. And that should now allow you to use those methods just fine. So now you can have your block with your device and this will work just fine. That said, if you need to actually sign in, that's where you can use something similar to, let's come back into our index here. Uh, we can check it uh, renders a logout button when signed in, do, and, and then you can just say, here's your sign in, uh, which is from device for a factory bot create user, then we render, and then we assert select a, a href for destroy user session path with a count of one. Go ahead and run this. And we can see that test is passing just fine uh, because uh, we have those helpers uh, and we can just sign in real quick and check to make sure that we're able to assert these things just fine. But okay, now let's go ahead and let's clean up the last two errors so we can move on with our lives. One is from our new post. So we'll come into the new. First things first, it needs to have a assign for a post factory bot dot build post. And instead of doing this assert select for our input name here, uh, we don't want to do that, of course, because we've we've done, done this enough times. We know this needs to not be a input name. Instead, we want to do a check for the image file field again. So we'll just say assert select input name post image, just like that. Go ahead and run that and we can hopefully see that that one's now passing. So the last one is our show. So let's come ahead, uh, go into our show real quick. Again, we're gonna be testing for the, uh, the image URL. So we'll include our Rails application routes URL helpers. We're going to create a post up here, but using factory bot once again, hopefully at this point you're getting the idea. We're going to get rid of this last expect because it's not doing anything. And I prefer to have my tests broken out far more than that. So we're just gonna say it renders the post image. 
means the first thing we have to do is render. And then after we render, we're going to do another assert select for the image with a SRC equal to the Rails blob path for the app post.image, only path true and a count of one. Go ahead and run our bundle exec our spec again. And we can see we have one failure in our show page here. Uh, and our show page is expecting a P style of green uh, with my text. So I do have to change this. So instead of using this my text uh, here or my title, uh, we're just going to do a match for a regex escape for our at post.title. And then we'll do one more for the content. That was my bad. Forgot that I changed that between my demo and my actual file here. Go ahead and we'll run that. And now we can see all of our tests are passing. So now you have your factory set up. You're using them with device. You have your session set up. You have your active storage set up and you have your users being associated with your posts right here. So that's about all I wanted to cover for this because it shows you how to set up factory bot, shows you how to use all of those things. Uh, there's of course far more nuance to it than just this initial setup. Uh, in addition to using you know, some of these commands like the build, there's also a, I believe a create uh, where instead of having things just created in memory for you, you can actually have it committed to the database. Uh, but those are gonna be different types of tests where you wanna do that. Uh, so it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, but in this case, we're just doing a lot of these builds. Uh, so there's other things to look into. There's actually a really good one. I looked up the factory bot rails. There was this article from Semaphore that I highly recommend reading. I'll have a link to this in the video description because it covers a whole bunch of different ideas, uh, including like factory linting, different you know patterns on the data factory uh, and a whole bunch of stuff in here where it was just a wonderful read. So I highly recommend reading this. I'll have a link to it uh, in the pinned comment as well. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.